vida mentre yo veo verte. You know, kid came in today. Kid's playing hockey. He's got a game tomorrow. His gloves needed to be patched up. Kid's gloves are going to be patched up. Girl's going to her bar mitzvah. Her heels are too high for her. So I had to cut them down so the girl could walk a little bit better at her bar mitzvah. The mother, at the same time, wanted her shoes to be cleaned up for the bar mitzvah. So, you know, did I help him? I hope so. You know, guy came in with a leather coat. His, uh, his jacket lining need to be hemmed up. I hemmed it up. So, you know, did I help him? Did I help the community? I help some of the people that are in it. In around 1910, my grandfather and his brother came through Ellis Island. He was about 14 years old and came to be with their relatives here in Marstown. And they were both shoemakers in Italy. They used to make shoes. So they re began repairing shoes. They opened up a shoe repair and they figured it out. I mean, it was just the skills that Italians came over here with. It wasn't, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a very big business. It was my grandfather and his brother. And from what I'm told, I mean, if they fixed you know, four or five pairs of shoes a day, it was a lot. But it was still enough so that they could eat, pay their rent, and, and live. They weren't going to shows, or they weren't going on vacations. They were here to work, and that's what they did every day, all year, every year, year after year, just like a lot of immigrant families did. I mean, they came here, obviously, to have a better life. Italy was a poor country and they came here to have a better life for their family. And so there was opportunity in America. It's what they did from the other country that they brought here, like many other immigrant families that came here. And then he had his son, my father, in 36. And my father worked with us right up until he passed away a couple of years ago. So, yeah. Mi llegada a Morristown fue, fue casualidad, ¿sí? porque yo inicialmente llegué a Nueva York, tuve nomás ocho días y de ahí ya me mudé para acá, para donde un familiar de mi hermano y casualmente di con el trabajo, con lo que yo sabía. Llegué acá a Morristown y ya me mudé para acá. Desde pequeño, porque mi padre tuvo taller de esto en Colombia, yo era trabajador independiente en Colombia, tenía mi empresa en Colombia, yo trabajaba en confecciones, yo fabricaba ropa, fabricaba carteras también. Yo siempre he estado relacionado con, con las máquinas. Tenía que trabajar muy duro para poder su, 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 sobrevivir allá, ¿sí me entiendes? Tengo dos hijos en Colombia. Eh, Económicamente mi familia está bien ahora. Yo también estoy bien ahora. De pronto es duro la soledad porque está uno solo en este país y la familia de uno en el país, en Colombia. Posiblemente mis hijos vienen a Estados Unidos queriendo Dios este año y la vida les cambia a ellos también, o sea, si la vida me cambia a mí, les cambia a ellos también. Yo vivo muy agradecido con ese país y le doy gracias a Dios todos los días por, por tenerme acá. Son como unos padres para mí. I got woken up in the middle of the night with a phone call that uh, my store was on fire. Um, and I said, you better get here quick. So I lived about 10 minutes away. I got my car, you know, got down here. When I got down here, the building was, uh, flames were shooting out the top and flames were shooting out all over the building. Uh, that was a hard one. When the fire burned, there was the only thing was left were the four walls. The inside, nothing was left. Um, Worried about my family, worried about how I was going to feed my family. You know, I had two kids, two small kids, house, mortgage, everything, just like everybody else. Uh, just kept working. Just kept working. I had space right next door here. I happened to be open. Friends came around and helped. The community came around and helped. 
kept somebody on the street. We just kept taking in shoes. We didn't even have machines to fix them. Next day, just never stopped. Didn't want to lose my guys. I had people here that were working for me. They needed to. They needed to work. They needed to pay their rent. They never lost a paycheck. We kept everybody. Kept everybody. Took money out of the bank to support the payroll. Yeah, wasn't easy. And then we just got the building built back up again. Took a few years. And that's it. Rolled from there. I mean, you know, I graduated high school in the 70s. You know, I mean, Speedwell Avenue has certainly changed. You want to talk about Speedwell Avenue? I mean, in the 70s, this block was practically empty. There was, there was a lot of vacant stores. There was, uh, there was a Jewish lady had a grocery store a couple of doors down. There was an Italian bakery on the other corner. Then what happened in the early 80s is the first Spanish store came. Now, if you look up and down the street, the majority of these businesses are owned by Spanish people and they're all doing well. They're hardworking people who just go to work every day like my grandparents did, like me and my, my, like, like my father did, like me and my brother do, and they're trying to make a living for their family. And they're doing the same thing that the Italians, the Irish, the Jewish people did 70, 80 years ago. The same thing, and now it's Spanish. It's all good. My one friend said, you know, Tommy, your business should do good. There's no competition. And I said, well, why should I pick a business that has competition? All right, that was great. Thank you.